Testing. Hi everybody and welcome back. I'm gonna go ahead and take over from the dogs from here. I'm sorry about losing our stream. We apparently have some construction going on across the street and it has totally taken over our um, live stream today. But I am here and uh, we are gonna do a very quick tutorial today. Um, I'm gonna go over two new features in V9. Um, you guys have seen the Mesh Converter tool over and over and over again from last week. And uh, we are gonna do uh, detail displacement using the painting freehand and we're also going to use an auto feature um, where you actually cut out from the height map. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and dive into that because we lost so much time getting into the stream going but um, you guys will bear with me and I hope some of you guys will come back over and uh, let me know if the stream catches if I'm losing streams uh, clips or anything. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you um, what I've got in this file here is uh, we made the we were just making a dogwood har har pun intended um, for our stream here. I've got a lot of nice gouges and things that happen to come through on the photogrammetry stand. So this is one of our older barks. It's kind of repeaty. It's made from little chunks, chunks. So you can see that it kind of repeats up there. So what I'm going to do is use the mesh converter and we're going to steal a better bark off of there that has a little bit more character and has some actual knots on it. So um, what I was doing while the dogs were telling you uh, what was going on there in that last stream. Um, if you are not from America, <laughs> that is today is April Fool's, it's April 1st, and um, we thought that would be fun. But <laughs> crashing our streams... Not, not as fun. Um, Okie dokie. Sorry about that. So I got this all set up with the mesh converter. If you need to see how we did that or the keys to do that, we did that last week on nonstop. I've got one ready here. And um, what I'm going to do for this is I'm just taking the material out and I want the modeler to load it back in for me. So I've got it set up. I've got my blend in there. And I'm going to go scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to do a 4K bark on this. And I'm going to make a new material. This is going to bring it back into Speed Tree for me. What I've done is um, I made a couple of these off of the original bark. I'll let it do its little magical thing there for a second. And hopefully we can catch back up. Um... <laughs> All right, and this is the bark it just made for us. Um, gonna bring that up now, so when we made there. We um, might could have adjusted the blend a little better. I'm not, I don't need the subsurface map in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. And we're gonna go ahead and put it on our other tree. Um, right now, I took the subsurface map out and then I forgot that it was left on one, so we're gonna take that to zero. And we're going to drag and drop that onto the tree. And now we have our new, better, more detailed bark. Now, Speed Tree just spat out a um, height map for us. So uh, there's two things we can do here. Um, these are new features, and they're kind of fun. The first one is going to be more of a straightforward approach. Um, really easy to do this. You're going to head over to the freehand mode. And making sure, I think I lost a lot of my chat guys. I don't know if my chat is loading. So if you guys are talking to me, I'll try to catch up. But um, I, I think I missed a question about um, peeling bark from Annie on the other one. And I will try to answer that at the end. Um, so let's just take a look at our freehand mode here. You guys have traditionally always had generator mode, which affects all the branches. Node mode, which affects... Uh, one branch at a time and our freehand mode is technically a node edit these are going to be um, per branch and they are more of our artistic edits right now I'm in bend um, speechy has 
a displacement tool now. So it's going to let you do minor sculpting without having to bring it in or out of a, another app to do some like extra work on here. I've got this cool little detail that would be a nice feature to add to pump in or out on this bark. Um, I've got a little overly glossiness going on here, so I might bring the gloss down a little bit on this map. I'm going to bring the highs down just a bit. Um, it looked, it was looking kind of wet. <laughs> so, um, the internet did April Fool's, <laughs> so. There we go. Um, welcome back. So we've got a couple of things here. Um, this is a very toothy edged bark. We can boost this a little bit if we want to adjust the normals, but it's going to make it look a little bit too heavily emphasized around the corners there. I'm going to hide my little guys there. Um, all right. So the first thing I'm going to do, if I want to add some um, polygons just to this little area here, I'm going to put it in polygon mode. Scribed. And we are going to go to the displacement tab, and this has a, a brush. You can hold the space bar to pump this out. Um, make it smaller. You can adjust the brush in, in the tree window, or you can adjust the brush um, here on the sides, the side properties. Now, um, if I do this, I'm going to get these awkward uh, sharp pieces and we don't really want that. Um, so I'm going to cancel out what I just did by right clicking. Sorry, this is the left click to bring it out and then right click to, excuse me, to push it back in. I might want to just undo everything I did entirely. Um, since we didn't add our verses in there and <laughs> Thanks. You know, we were actually sure if April Fool's was like everywhere, but um, it crashed our stream. So uh, the dogs kind of took that one to the grave with them. So <laughs> they're the kind of, it works. Um, so what we want to do here is add enough polygons in this one particular area. So we're going to just paint those on. We're going to go to the feature vertices and same thing with the brush. It's the exact same. We're going to hold down the space bar and we're going to add them in this area. Oh, and I have, <laughs> y'all see that I just fell for this fact that I have a split on this tree and it gave me the warning sign. I am not with it today. Um, but fortunately, the modeler had these little hints that yell at you when you're doing the wrong thing. So I have a split on this tree. So um, when split is on the tree, you can't actually paint the vertices. Um, it would mess up everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our gen mode. We're going to grab our main trunk here. And we're going to turn that split off. We're going to go to skin. And we are going to take it off. And there are vertices that we just painted and we weren't aware of it. We're going to go back to freehand mode and undo kind of this uh, mess that I've made here. And um, all of our trees in the library, just may answer this question real fast from Stig Design. Um, yeah, all of our trees, like you want to get by one of our game trees for sure, because um, those are set up for games, but those will work across any of the different uh, engines there. So Unreal Engine, Lumberyard, or Unity. Um, and you can definitely make variations. That's what they're there for. Um, randomize those suckers and stick them in for however you need. Um, all right, we're going to add a couple more. We're going to make this high poly VFX deal here. We're going to put it back on standard mode. We're going to make our brush really tiny and we're going to do some leveling out here. What I want to do is smooth out everything that I've done here. So I'm just going to clear what I did before because I wasn't really paying attention to the texture. I'm going to do a tinier brush and then I'm going to left click space bar, kind of punch these areas out. I'm going to push this in actually, make the strength a little bit stronger, the size smaller and we're going to do a little bit of editing that way. Um, this is going to be 
a little harder on your computer. Um, you might notice that you're getting a little slow while you run these. And so if you do that, you know, just do little sections and kind of work bit by bit to punch and pull that out. I'm still on smooths. <laughs> push the plus and minus button and then push these guys in. So I've got it on kind of strong, too strong. So we'll smooth it out a little bit. And if I wanted to go crazy detail in there, I could, um, I'd have to go back to the vertex section and work that way. I think that these little tiny cracks that we have going here on now on the edge will help us get more of a crevice in there. You can see that there's texture stretching in this because it is truly a displacement. So it's working with the original texture that you've got in there. Um, if you're doing anything hardcore, you might want to take this into another program because you can easily bring it back in and just use a stitch to attach the rest of your speed tree stuff to. Um, but this is for minor um, bumps and bruises. And keep in mind that when you're modeling these, you're going to be a lot farther back from the tree. Um, very, very, very unlikely that you'll be up on it. Um, so what I would want to do is smooth out these areas here. Um, I kind of want a bigger brush for this move just to kind of cancel out the fact that I did a poor job of doing that because I'm live and hi everybody joining in late. Um, so that's going to be our first uh, kind of manual sculpting area for barks. That's kind of fun. Um, the second thing is based off of the height map and it's automatic. It's doing the exact same thing. Um, we've got a mode now where you can add vertices to sections along the height map and then pump out the displacement. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the cutouts on the actual bark. This is very unusual. This is not something that we've done in seven or eight before. We're going to make a cutout. In the cutout editor, we have our bark here. We're actually going to show the, sh the height on this one. We're going to pick an area that we want to have a higher detail, like more vertices in. And I'm going to use this long part where it's sunk in here and just kind of go ahead and add these in. Making sure, I think we have um, a few of the dogs on the Spade Tree team in our chat channel as long as <laughs> as well as uh, Danny Oaks and Mando today. So I'll let him answer that one. Um, so I'm not being too careful in here. I'm just getting this one particular area and then I'm going to use the test solution to kind of fill it in. Oh, the... All right, we're going to add that many polygons in the high area and then kind of drop it as we go. So high, medium, and then low. And um, we're going to go back to our tree trunk. We're going to go to generator mode. And we're going to hit on the segment tabs. Um, on the properties here, you're going to see we're going to have our featured mesh. We're going to enable it. And now, when we zoom out, you're going to see the area that we've cut out. It might be part of the area that we um, hid there. Let's see if we can get it to show up there. I think the, oh, give a second. Um, our, the vertices are not showing up for a second, but I think I'm in a beta build. And I think that our modeler, let me switch modelers on you real fast. <laughs> Sorry about that.
We're going to open up our live folder that we had there. <laughs> yeah, the wrong one. There they go. They're showing up in this uh, other build that I've got open. Sorry about that, guys. Um, we had just ended up fixing that. So we, the one that we've just cut out, we've got them showing up now all along the branch. Um, you're going to really increase your polygon count. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got those on strategically. On this one, we've got our segments that we've taken out there. We can put a few more back in and we can actually, um, you can change the scale of that if you need to bring them back down. Um, this method is going to be pretty handy for game trees because you can take, uh, take these guys into, let's go back to our cutout for just a second. I'm going to add a ton. And we'll show them that way. Um, so on this guy, we wanted to add these in there. And we wanted to go to our standard mode. Um, see, I've obviously displaced it way too much there. But you can go um, with all these segments out and pop them in or out. And you get a little bit more detail on those areas. Um, it's going to be a little too extreme. Uh, I think that's for also because our height map is a little bit extreme. This is going to work on very exaggerated um, hand painting these maps uh, for something like this to pop out one area is um, applicable, I guess would be a good way to put it. Um, the tinier motion that we're getting there is a little too spiky. Um, so what we would actually do is there's just too many in there. We could scale this down a little bit and then go back to our segment tabs and just turn the scale down, take some of those out. And that actually cleans up a little bit of the spikiness that we have going there to push those in or out. Um, so two different workflows um, if you don't want to do everything by hand. And that one's more of a procedural style. You can turn it on on the tree or not. Um, and it's going to be part of the randomization. Whereas if you sculpt something and add vertices, you're probably going to want to just randomize the top of the tree and not the bottom. And <laughs> yes, thank you. Bugs are just part of this April Fool's thing going on here. Um, I wanted to answer a question for the chunks real fast, just because someone asked me that at the very beginning. Um, let's talk about peeling bark. Um, let's go ahead and add one on here. We've got the decoration generator and we've got peeling bark. And these guys are going to be based on the cutout you made for them. So let's find a, a, a bark real fast that has a um, peeling bark section for it. Let me find one because I don't have one ready. Um, My computer is just going there. All right, all I can find right now is the shag bar. So we're just gonna take some of their um, cluster bio pieces just so we can demonstrate this. We call them chunks. <laughs> I'm gonna bring in chunk three. I guess I had that on the other window. You might not have missed that. We're gonna make a cutout for the chunk. It's a little uh, filtery there. Um, so we're going to make a, um, part of the cutout thing here is you can put the, uh, pivot point in the middle, but usually up and down for these peeling barks, we want it down lower. If you don't have a chunk that comes up on the sides, if I put them, um, if I put the pivot point here, you're going to see some folding and maybe some overlap in these sections. Um, 
but we are going to try to combat that best as we can. So uh, another thing that would be helpful is to have a very neat across the side um, mesh for your chunk and having enough vertices in it is a big thing here. So a lot of times with chunks, you don't want to flood your tree with them necessarily, but from if you step back from a tree, um, just going to save them all out in high, medium, low. Obviously, we would want to LOD these. Um, we were going to put that on the tree. There we go. So um, these are going to cost a lot of uh, polygons. So what you want to do is have enough on the tree so that when you're back here, you're actually getting something from them. So right now, they're real flat. So they're not really giving us much texture there. Um, we can decrease the amount of these guys and just put like 30 on the tree. Um, let's put them farther down. We'll put them on the lower trunk here. Um, and have them actually do something so that they count for something. And um, she's trying to avoid this section here. She wants to blend. So we're going to adjust the geometry a little bit by changing the start angle and how far they are pulling out. So the fold is going to lift up the edges a little bit. And we're going to want to match the color on those. So I'm going to curl those out. Uh, I don't have a back on this. Um, they are going to cut in and out if you have, uh, say, different start angles and you have them adjusted that way. Um, I would say having a circular one will definitely help with that fold piece because the square is on there. It does seem to help out. And then we want to match the color on these. We want to make sure that they blend in with the bark that we're adding it to. Um, so we want to match the tone first. Um, it's going to be really hard to match these because they're from a completely different tree, but we can still do it. We're going to take the green out by adding a little bit of yellow back into it. And then this is kind of a blue test to this bark. So let's see if we can make that adjustment to make it a little bit more on the blue side. The green is a little bit hard to take out. Um, we can take the saturation down and see how that goes and kind of play from play with it from there. Here's one blue. Um, so that's not perfect. Uh, we can go ahead and contrast these a little bit and you can see we have too much gloss on these. We would probably take this value down to 0.4. And I made it maybe too soft. Um, I was catching up to make sure that uh, I had missed anything, but to answer Luciano's question, we can add the we can't add the polygons without the spikes. Um, so right there, the displacement that I had was too fine. Um, you guys are familiar with loading your displacement in this map here. Um, so I've got a lot of tiny edges and a lot of contrast in here. So when I don't have enough vertices in here, it's going to displace it everywhere, basically. And so what I would want to do for... Um, maybe make an, a second height map for something for that to use for the details vertices that is actually just more of a black and white with a little bit of smoothing. Um, and that way the displacement that's coming out is not quite so fine. Or I could go back and add a bajillion polys to get rid of that spiky look. And um, I hope that answered their brand. We are loading in the height map to our material now and we have our material itself is actually set to um, the displacement but we have it you can set it to the material and get it that way I might not have had that set when I demoed that that could have been one problem um, <laughs> it's hard to remember how to do everything while you're live um, let's see if we can bump that back out uh, now we see that big bump that's coming in. This would be probably something that I would need to edit on the map itself for sure. 
Um, back to our peeling bark. Uh, I think I've got your question there. You want to match our tone. You also want to pay attention to your light with your peeling bark. Um, you've got some lighting controls at the very odd, uh, bottom here. And depending on what type of bark you've got here, um, you might want to try a little bit of buffy puffiness. Um, but you want to kind of try to match the normals of the surface that it's on. Um, so if you go to uh, turn on our normals so we can see them for a second here, these are all going to be pointing straight out. Um, so down here, it's possible that you might want to adjust things like match service is going to be on all of our um, templates for sure, but matching the surface, but you might actually want to use the profile curve to puff up to point these out. So you might want the middle normal to be pointing straight out as well. Um, you can do something funky with the top if you need, but if you're getting little shadows or weirdness in there, um, something like that might be a little bit better matching the surface there. And that'll help blend these two areas together. Um, my voice is so scratchy today. <laughs> so um, this is a very, very short stream. And I want to thank you guys for popping by, even though we had all the difficulties with the dogs <laughs> earlier. Um, but we appreciate it. And we will see you guys next week. I think we are doing uh, small plants for a greenhouse. Um, and so, uh, thank you for watching, and thank you for all of the dogs that helped um, select this, our tree material for this. <laughs> thank you, guys.